Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss repurchase agreements, also known as repo or repo agreements. What is a repurchase agreement? A repurchase agreement, simply put, as the definition implies, I'm going to sell you something, sell you, let's assume, a piece of inventory for $100. You're going to give me cash today. So in return, you're going to give me cash for $100. But the transaction is not is not finished yet. Then we have an agreement on the side. I'm going to buy back the same inventory from you for $106. Therefore, what I will do, you will I will you will give me back that inventory and I'll give you back $106. So hold on a second. Why are we doing this? Why would I sell you something for 100 buy it back at 106? Well, that's not really a sale. What you are technically doing is borrowing money this is a finance transaction so why is this important it's important for revenue recognition we want to know whether the company is entering into a repo agreement or is this transaction a sale so the company transfer or sells an asset to a customer but they have an unconditional obligation or a right so they have to buy it back they have the right to buy it back or if they choose or they have an unconditional obligation they have to buy it back the asset at a later date if the amount of the repurchase is greater than or equal to the selling amount, then that's not that wasn't really a sale. What that was is a financing transaction. You're borrowing money, but disguising it as a sale. So you cannot do that. Why is this important? Why this topic is important? Well, if you know anything about the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, one of the companies that went bankrupt and basically almost brought the whole market with it is a company called an investment firm called Lehman Brothers. So what did Lehman Brothers do? Lehman Brothers sold, in quote, sold their bad investments before they issued their financial statements through repo agreement. What does that mean? Well, here's what they did. So Lehman had on their books bad investments, specifically bad investments in bonds, in those bonds that are backed up by mortgage-backed securities. So what happened is this. Right before the end of the year, they wanted to make those investments disappear. So when the auditor valued the company, when the auditor, you know, look at their financial assets, those assets don't even exist. So what they did, they found a counterparty, another bank, and they told the bank, look, we're going to give you, for example, uh, billions worth of those bonds. So we're going to give you our bonds as an investment and they're worth 105, whatever they're worth, it doesn't matter. Let's assume they're worth $105. We just, we're going to give, give it to you now and we need $100 in cash. But what, but what Lehman did, Lehman find out if they over collateralize, simply put, what does that mean? It means they are giving them 5% extra for their $100 then it looks like a sale because repo is as long as you are within two percent it's a repo agreement now what they did lehman kind of find this loophole and said okay take our bonds and give us 100 let's assume 105 million give us 100 million now the other party doesn't care because the other party has an agreement that lehman is going to have to give them back 105 dollars or 105 million so as far as this party is concerned the counterparty is that's a loan for them however lehman record this as a sale this this party recorded it as a loan so why did lehman wanted to record it as a sale to get rid of those bonds so they're not valued then what happened two three months later or whatever the agreement is lehman will pay them back the 105 million or the 105 billion whatever that number is and the other party will give them back their bonds the other party doesn't care how lehman accounted for the transaction the other party as far as they're concerned they gave them a loan the loan is collateralized and Lehman's going to buy back the bond. So this is why this is important in the real world, because companies will try to disguise repo agreement as sales agreement. So the best way to illustrate this from an accounting perspective is to work an example. But before we work the example, I would like to remind you, whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, to take a look at my website farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. I'm a useful addition a useful supplement for your accounting courses as well as your cpa this is a list of all my accounting courses organized by chapter topics i provide lectures multiple choice true false exercises for most courses my cpa material is aligned with your becker roger wiley gleam miles or whatever cpa review course you are taking if you have not connected with me on linkedin please do so take a look at my linkedin recommendation like this recording it helps me tremendously share it with other connect with me on instagram facebook twitter and reddit 
As I said, the best way is to look at an example. Let's assume Adam Company transfer a piece of equipment that they have that they're not using on January 1st, 20X0 to Ryan Company for 100,000. And Adam agrees to repurchase this piece of equipment on December 31st, 20X1 for a price of 121,000. We have to be very careful. What happened here, Adam transfers it? Well, but they're gonna buy it back for 121,000. That's not really a sale. Now, if Adam wants to cook their books, they will consider this as a sale, but this is not really a sale. Therefore, we're going to debit cash 100,000, credit liability to Ryan Company 100,000. For now, we have a liability to Ryan Company. This is not a sale. So the key, the trick is for for whoever's, uh, whoever's uh, cooking the books, consider this as a sale, which is not a sale. Now, we're going to assume for this transaction, the implied interest rate is 10%, which is that's the case. You're going to see why. So at the end of at the end of year X zero, a year later into the deal, well, we have a loan and the loan will incur interest and the interest is 10%. Therefore, we're gonna debit interest expense, $10,000, credit liability to Ryan, $10,000. Now, keep in mind, now we're gonna kind of keep track of this liability. It started at 100,000, a year later, we added 10,000 to it. Then at the end of December 31st, 20 X one, Again, now we're going to record another interest expense of 11,000 and liability to Ryan. It's going to increase, I'm sorry, not 10, 11,000 and liability to Ryan will increase by 11,000. Why 11,000? Because we started the year with 110,000, then times 10%, that's going to give us 11,000 in interest. And now we're going to add another 10,000 to the liability. Now the liability is worth 121,000. Now we are ready to pay off the liability. We debit the liability 121,000 to get rid of it. And we pay cash 121,000, which is the original amount, the interest for year zero, the interest for year one, 10,000 and 11,000. Thus the transaction is completed. It was a repo transaction. What should you do now? Go to my website, farhatlectures.com, work additional multiple choice questions, look at additional resources. As an accounting student, you want to invest in your education, you want to invest in your professional certification. It will pay off dividend down the road. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.